Right, how, how do I top that? I promise I'm not going to ask anyone to sing about spiders or monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain Toastmaster, fellow members and guests. So the icebreaker is, this is my first speech over here, and um, as Elsa said, this icebreaker is meant to be about um, introducing myself, and it's meant to be the easiest speech, or so they say. And, you know, you just talk about yourself, and that's, that's easy, right? No, not, not really. Um, I'd rather, I think I'd rather talk about someone else, but I can't. I'm going to talk about myself, and here goes. So I grew up in the Midlands in the 70s and 80s, which is okay, but you know, I wanted more. I wanted to live in London, and London is the place I've always dreamt about. Um, you know, the vibrancy, the busyness, and the glamour of London that always attracted me. And every time I, I watched TV, I saw, the, um, I saw the, um, the images of the famous landmarks, Big Ben, and the Tower of London, and the River Thames, and all of these things. And every time I saw these images, it just really excited me, and I wanted to, desperately wanted to come to London. And that's what I was aimed for. And so, at the age of 18, I realized my dreams. I got a place at university, and um, I was literally living the dream. I was, I was here doing what I always wanted. Um, and, you know, it was fun, it was exciting, and the people were really interesting. They were really stuck up compared to where I'd been previously, but that's what made them interesting, and that's what I really loved about London. And the best thing about London was just the cosmopolitan nature of London. You could see people from all walks of life, from all different countries, and I just loved that. Um, and you know, I, I, I've travelled a lot, and I've been to many, many different countries. I, I travelled for 12 months after finishing university, I lived in Japan, I lived in you know, other countries uh, in Asia, but you know, London is where my heart belongs, and this is where I've always wanted to be. And specifically now, I, I live in Hatch End uh, with my lovely wife and my sometimes lovely two children. <laughs> <laughs> so how would I describe myself? There's one characteristic which I'm particularly proud of, and that's that I'm always optimistic. And to me, the glass is always half full. And I was wondering, when I was um, sort of writing this speech, I was wondering where I got that quality from. And it's, it's not my mum, it's not my dad or Mr. Grump, as he's known in the family. Um, it was actually my grandfather. And um, watching how my grandfather lived his life was a true inspiration to me when I was growing up. Um, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but he really went through a lot of, um, a lot of problems and a lot of ups and downs in his life. But I could, you could never tell, he never showed it. And that, to me, was, was great. So, at the age of six, he became an orphan. He'd lost both of his parents. Um, and he was living in poverty in, in India. At the age of seven, he desperately wanted to go to school because he was, I guess he was really ambitious at that age. But he had no money. And, um, you know, at, at that time in India, he needed to pay for your education, and so he had no money. So somehow he persuaded the headmaster to allow him to attend classes in return for sweeping the floors uh, after school. And imagine, this is a child at the age of seven, so to me that was miraculous, and showed his ambition and his determination. As a teenager, in search of a better life, he decided to, to leave his birthplace and to move out and to live in Uganda, in East Africa. And this was a country he'd never heard of, never mind been to. So it was a big step for him. And the story, you know, I hear some amazing stories, but initially it was a real struggle for him. He was, um, he was struggling to get by, he had, he had nothing there. He was starting from scratch. But, you know, he plugged away, he stayed positive, and eventually became very, very successful. Uh, he started doing well, and this was the prime of his life. He'd achieved so much, he started from nothing. Sadly, there was to be another twist in his, uh, in his life. Some of you may know the history of Uganda, but there was um, a dictator called Idi Amin. And he woke up one day and he decided all of the Asians had to leave the country and uh, within 90 days. So everything would be lost. Everything he'd built up from scratch would be lost and he had to leave. 
So we came here to the UK, welcome to the UK, and um, being as positive as he was, the UK became his new favourite country. Um, but he started from nothing, he became empty handed started from nothing. And, um, but again, he bounced back. He created new businesses from scratch, he made some amazing smart investments, and he, he did well, he, he became successful again. And, you know, bouncing back again from so many setbacks was only <coughs> possible, I know that now, because of his positive mindset. He was determined to do whatever it took to, to actually make a better future for himself. He never dwelt on the past, he was only thinking about his family and the future, and that's what made him successful again. And that really amazed and inspired me. And I didn't know it at the time when I was a child, but having thought about it now, I realised that was it. That was his prime quality. And sadly, my, uh, my grandfather is no longer with us um, now, but his legacy lives on inside of me. And his attitude to life continues to inspire me. So my simple message is this. Whatever life throws at you, just stay positive. And as Oscar Wilde said, some of us are in the gutter, but we're looking up at the stars. Thank you very much.